It's a really dirty box. All right. A couple of dirty boxes. Dirty boxing. Is that the sound boxing make? I don't know. You tell me in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by for another box folding video here. We're gonna make some uh, general brown shipping boxes here out of these uh, pre-printed sheets that I make myself. You can get these in my Etsy store. That's etsy.com slash shop slash Oilers Workshop. You can get them as a downloadable file so you can print as many as you want yourself. Or you can buy these uh, pre-printed sheets uh, just like this from me and I will ship them to you. And uh, you can experiment and uh, do what I'm about to do in this video. So. Follow along, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoy uh, making miniatures, and uh, let's get into it.
all those are cut out, folded, glued, and drawing. And while that's happening, I'm gonna show you another way to make uh, packages, uh, not necessarily boxes, but packages from scratch using scraps. Let me just move the camera and show you. I've been pushing aside all these scraps while I've been cutting and I saved these long strips. I'm gonna show you something you can do with these to create uh, little bubble mailers or mailing envelopes or document envelopes. Now these, uh, you don't have to measure these. You can if you wanna be like super crazy accurate, but I just kinda take some of my wider cutoffs that have a length to them, you know? They have, they're like wider as opposed to, uh, you know, like this piece, like this wide. And then they have a length because I wanna be able to fold them over. So I do know like a bubble mailer that holds a document is gonna be a, almost, a, it's gonna be about, uh, eight and a half by 11, which is the size of a paper, but a little bit bigger. So probably like nine by 11, or, you know, you could say two of these square units you see uh, down here on my grid. So I can basically uh, just line up one of my sides here and I could, if I wanted to get all crazy and demarcate uh, where the inch is or just under an inch, right? Let me zoom in here. So you could, that's where my inch is. So an, an accurate size would be right here. But we also need that little fold over flap, right? When you fold over a uh, bubble mailer. So making it that full inch and folding it here, but making the fold over piece less than an inch, right? Here's your next inch demarcation. So cutting it sh just short of an inch and folding it right here at an inch. When I fold this on this, I'll have that little flap. So you'll see what I mean here as soon as I do it. Let me just cut this out. And I'm, I'm being kind of rough uh, about the um, shape and size of this. I'm not super worried about it as long as the folds look good, it won't matter. So I'm gonna fold on this line here. Just want my fold to be as perpendicular as I can get it. Right? And then I can just kind of reposition this how I want to get it straight. And then typically a bubble mailer is not square. This is pretty square. So I can just take this folded piece and cut off what I think is a good dimension to make it that uh, nine by 11. Is that what I said at the beginning? There we go. And then I can straighten out this cause that's a little off. And I can fold over this little flap. So I have a little folded flap. Now what I do is this is the size of a bubble mailer, mailer. To make it look more like a bubble mailer, I take my pliers and I fold over the edge here. Fold over the edge here. I'm just putting a crease in it. I'm saying fold, but I'm, I guess I'm just creasing it. I should say that. And do a little fold here, right? And then I take one of my smaller cutoffs that might fit in there. Actually, I'll probably get an even smaller one. Uh, let's see, yeah, like this one. And I'm gonna cut off a piece and I'm gonna fold this piece in half. I don't have to be super accurate about this. And I'm actually gonna glue this inside of this piece to give it some dimension. See that? When I do that, it adds a thickness and then when I clamp it down and glue it, it'll have this sort of uh, roundness to it. Actually, I might add one more piece. I think I want that to be a little thicker. One more piece in the center there. Just like that. And we don't have to be worried about that. But see now when I fold it over, it's got some bulk to it. It's got some rigidity and it looks uh, a little bit, a little bit more real. I can see in the camera here that this is not straight. Just going to straighten that out a little bit here. Just take a little off the top. So I'm just going to get my Mod Podge like I have been doing oops fell out these are this is where my big fat fingers do not do not do not come in handy and then i'm gonna just here actually i'm just gonna smear it all in there because i don't know why i'm worrying about the edges it's gonna smear it all up in there i don't know why i went to mario but i did Alrighty, and just gonna close this up, and I'm gonna put these binder clips on the sides. See how it's bulging out? That's what we want. 
just like that. And then I can fold that back. And then when this dries, I'll have a little, uh, you know, bubble mailer. But you can make these with your cutoffs any size, big, small. And uh, I haven't created a template, a printable template for these yet. I will do that with like the three lines and like a label. Um, but this is just a way you can do it with your scraps, make use of your scraps basically. So, you know, recycle, re reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Help save the planet in the process of making miniatures. One little way uh, you can give back. So I'm gonna make a few more of these in different sizes and I'll show you how you can add some fine detail even if there is no printing that looks uh, real at the scale. Uh, when I'm done. So hang in there. One more sec. One more time lapse. much worrying about the size I'm just eyeballing it after getting that initial sizing I'm not gonna freak out too much about it because it's just about getting the um, proportions kind of right you know kind of that uh, paper uh, size you know a little bit longer a little bit shorter um, not necessarily some perfect dimension and again if you're a little bit OCD like I get with uh, certain types of builds then by all means you know measure it all out plot it all out I will uh, get a template made available uh, that has got labels and things on it as soon as possible. Um, but this is a way, in the meantime, you guys can kind of fiddle with, you, fiddle with it your own way. And go nuts. Not much to say here. Don't speak. You're just making miniature envelopes, so please stop explaining. I already saw you do it. Wow, that was like the worst parody ever. But was it entertaining? Tell me in the comments below. Whoops. It's always fun when I drop stuff. Okay. My iPhone storage was full, so I had to stop the video for a sec and delete some stuff. I guess I record too much and I forget to delete. <laughs> oh well. So I was uh, using, for some reason, I was uh, unintelligently using my clips, my uh, clothespins, this way when I was holding them and I was stacking the clothespins, but I was like, wait a minute, I can just change the direction of it. So you might have saw me doing that in the time lapse, and I realized, wow, that that does not look, that doesn't look smart. So here's the smart way to do it, kids. All right, let's unclip some of these. Clean up our mess here first. Whoops. See how well these did. How well they fared. Sorry. It's pretty late here where I'm working. It's into the wee hours of the morning. And I'm getting tired. And a little bit mental. Because. Because. Because of the wonderful things he does. Da -da 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 -da. We're off to see the wizard. The wonderful blah blah doo, doo Okay. Look at all these little envelopes. They're so cute. They're so cute. I love you. That's my secret voice. I love you. I love you. If you don't know. So now at this point, you can make some decisions. Do you want to leave them open or do you want to fold them over? Right? Big. Big life-changing decisions here. Leave it open. Hold it closed. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. 
Are you an bubble mailer open type of miniaturist or a bubble mailer closed type of miniaturist? Or are you, or are you non-discriminatory? You're, you're, you're open to all of it. What do you say? Don't get political. <laughs> Let's see. I think I like this the way this small one looked folded. So I'm going to use my crusty paintbrush. And I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to do a fold. I'm going to reclip this. Bam. Ba bam. And I think this one looked pretty good folded over. That is a plane flying overhead because I am, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm graced with plane presence in this direction that I'm in because I come by pretty regularly. So. Wellity, wellity, wellity. Okay. Clip. Clip, 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 clip. I'm going to put two clips on this one because it's resisting me. Okay. So let me go get uh, the things I need. Okay. Things I need are these micron pens, these super fine point pens. Uh, this one is, well, it's size SX for Faber Castell. But this Micron pen is a O2. Um, these are kind of running out of ink, so we'll see how good these get. But basically, you can go on these and you can scribble, scribble, scribble and draw little things on them if you want to. Like the little lines where you would put someone's address. Yeah, these are kind of low on ink, sorry. But you get the point. Right? And you can do the little lines up here. Do, 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 do. There's your little package. That sounded wrong. Um, but, I mean, there it is, right? So, you can even do things like write notes on here. Like, top secret. Or you can write two J Y one two three Fake Street New York New York one two zero five one and then you can pretend like you wrote a from up here. Or you can just scribble, scrabble, whatever you want to do. And uh, I did want to show something that I hadn't shown in a previous video with while I have these out. I'm going to sacrifice a box to the box gods, if there is any. The god of the boxing. So we have this box here. I could finish this. I could beautify it. I could fold the edges down as it was meant to be, right? I could fold these down and we have a beautiful, beautiful box for our display. I could put some tape on it, which I'll show you in a second, and make it everything that it wants to be. Or I could take it and I could tear it in half. <gasps> That's okay. And then I could take it and I could tear that in half. And then I could tear this off. And oh my god, I just made some miniature trash. Or I can take one of these tear offs and I can write a cool message like. Coolest message of all. Homeless. Need help. Stranded. I guess that's not very cool. Or I could write... Family kidnapped by ninjas need dollars for karate lessons. God bless. So you see, you can do quite a lot with just some 
light brown, medium brown cardstock. So we got some little folded envelopes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually make some out of uh, Manila folder. Is it Manila? Is that the right one? Manila? I know Manila. That's the capital of um, Philippines, right? Um, or is that Phuket? No, that's Thailand. Phuket is Thailand. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to cut this off of just cut a little scrappy do scrappy piece. There we go. Okay. And I've never done this before, but I just realized I could do the same thing with this. It'll probably look even more authentic. Uh, at least to like the American standard uh, materials. You know, I know around the country, we don't, or around the country, around the world, we don't always use the same uh, actual like materials. Some people use more recycled. Some people use brown, white, gray, this sort of yellowy orange. So <clears throat> you might be from another country thinking, what? What is he talking about? Well, I'm, you know, we do things with this color. I don't know why. I don't know how this color was chosen as like a standard color for these types of folders, but it was. There we go. That looks much better. All right, I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm going to shorten this. This is still a little too tall. And cut myself off a little flap. There we go. Do the same thing to this. It's too tall. Cut off a little flap. Look at that. Paper crafts. Do 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 do. All right. And I'm just going to use some more of these scrap pieces from my other cardstock and fold it in a zigzag. That'll look pretty cool. All right, time to get the Mod Podge out, the Mood Pooge, and a Bruch. This thing is it's dried overnight, so it's like unusable. All right. Let me get a usable one. <clears throat> we'll just waste a fine, fine bristle brush because it's a cheapo depot brush. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not putting glue in between the zigzags here because I want them to kind of push out, right? I want this spring effect to happen inside the package to keep it expanded. I don't necessarily want to lock it down. I think it would just gives the vibe that it's more real, I think, even if it's subconscious, you know? So I'm going to just smeared glue and this manila uh paper i'm going to not try not to do this as dense on because i realize this is a thinner paper and i don't want it to like bleed everywhere uh and like bleed through the paper like the the moisture of the glue and mess up the look of it so i am going to spread it a little bit thinner for the sake of the realness of the project Okay, there's that. Fold that over. <clears throat> and where are my clothespins go? Where are my clothespins at, yo? Okay, there's one. That looks pretty good. Here's the other one. Okay, that's already looking pretty good. And we'll get some more scrap. <clears throat> do our zigzag fold. Do, 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 do. Chicken nuggets. All right. This might be too big, let me see. Is that too big? Eh, it's kind of big, yeah. I'm going to cut a little bit off the side. I'm making a mess, checking it twice. Gonna make it worse, cause that's what I do. I had an epiphany that all manila folders are created equal. Yeah. You know, it's, <clears throat> I think it's a default. I think I'm giving my, my, uh, myself my own sense of awkward silence. So I'm filling it in. 
how I normally would. I'm singing random lyrics and making stuff up, which is what I normally do when I don't know what to say and uh, usually end up sticking my foot in my mouth or embarrassing myself. But you won't tell anyone, will you? Shh. <laughs> I guess I'm still a little goofy, tired goofy. I don't know. Okay. Making a box, folding it twice. Gonna find out if it's full of rice. Boxing town is coming. Not at all. Do, do, do. You know somebody I watch, uh, Peter Brown is a channel I watch. Um, he sings a lot to himself. And I, I felt less weird when I found out that Peter Brown with, you know, like, I think he's got like a million subscribers or something. And he just goofs around in his shop like I do and makes cool stuff um, with a lathe and epoxy resin and stuff. And uh, he sings to himself a lot and uh, puts it in his videos. So I guess I shouldn't feel too awkward about it. <laughs> But you just, you can't help it, you know? Okay. Okay, these are gluing. And while these are gluing and drying, Back to back to folding up the box bottoms. So I just had an epiphany. <laughs> live right now an epiphany just for you um i realize i've been like trying to hold these stupid bottoms of the boxes closed forever by putting things in them and on them and i could have just been using the stupid diorama magnets the entire time check it out i can't believe i never thought of that <laughs> doing this the whole time without the magnets. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And I can use a small one on the small one and a big one on the outside if I run into small ones because that's what happened. We got all these magnets holding everything tight. Wow, I've been doing this the wrong way for like seven years. But now you know the right way. Okay, let's go ahead and do these priority mail ones. Um, these are basically the same as everything I just showed you. Uh, you just wanna be careful how you trim them. You just wanna pay attention. So I provided, uh, if you buy these from me or you download them to, to print them yourself or make them yourself, you're gonna need uh, this back side. So just keep in mind, you want to cut out this whole strip here and then fold here in the center uh, to get your fold over just like we did for these little guys. All right. So same concept here. And then these uh, priority mail boxes are the same concept as these. They just don't have uh, these big side tabs. They're designed to intersect uh, here, but that's kind of hard to do to hard to cut out. So I'll leave it to you. How detailed you want to get? These are standard boxes. One thing I'm gonna to add to these, uh, when you go to digital download or buy these from me, just keep in mind, you're going to need uh, to leave a tab on the end here. And I will draw that in in my Photoshop file, but these pre-printed ones don't have it. So just keep in mind, you need a tab so you can glue it to the other side on these. I just forgot to add that because um, these were originally just personal files for me uh, to make these with, but uh, now that they're for you, um, I need to make them a little bit more user friendly. So I will go into my program and add those. And on future printouts, they will have the tab. And I'll try to note that, notate these and all the ones I have already printed out that don't have that. So let's make some shipping boxes.
this made. Woo! A lot of work. Um, so I added these little labels at the end. Uh, all I did was go on Google for these um, and search. Let me focus my camera. All I did was go on Google and search uh, FedEx labels and just highlight and copy and shrink down in my graphics program, similar to the method that I used to make the boxes and make like a little grid of them like this. And I printed them out on some label paper. And then uh, all I did with them is I just cut them out. Boom, 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 just like that. And we can take uh, with my big fat fingernails and try to peel this off. I don't know why my camera doesn't want to focus. Sorry about that. Excuse my dirty hands again. Um, I work uh, work really hard all day <laughs> doing other work. So that is how my hands look uh, normally. But there's our little miniature label. Um, some of these I didn't think about it. Some of them have UPS labels on on priority mailboxes. Um, but you know, here's one of the examples of the mailbox and uh, putting some tape on it. So let me show you guys uh, one last step, which is how to do the tape. It's uh, really, really straightforward. All right, so just hang in there for me. And all you gotta do is get regular packing tape, just like this, and cut yourself off a piece. All right, you wanna make sure your surface is clean. Mine is probably not, because I've been doing all this cutting. And then line it up with a, a grid mat. You don't have to do this on a grid, too. You can do this on a table or a piece of something that the tape won't actually adhere to very well. Get yourself a straight edge like this. About a quarter of an inch is right for one twelfth scale. Uh, half an inch is close to, I'd say three-eighths of an inch is good for one sixth scale. But a half an or a quarter of an inch, excuse me, is good for one twelfth. Take yourself a blade. I'm just going to use this X-Acto and score that at a quarter of an inch. You see that line I put through it right there? I know it's at the bottom of the screen, but I want to move this frame. And then you take your box in. Just go ahead and fold it how you want it. I'm not know why this All right, take your box in and fold it. I don't know why I didn't want to focus. I got it focused now. Okay, <clears throat> and then just take your knife, and I usually use the knife. Don't poke yourself. Cut yourself and pick up the tape with the knife. Um, and then you can... Lay it over the seams on your box. Well, I'll probably have to put it on my finger. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. I did it anyways. Okay. So, you just want to lay it over the box. Just like so. And you can wrap it all the way around if you're a tape all the way around kind of person. Or you can trim it. Do it like that. And do another piece on the bottom. Looks a little bit more, uh, a little bit more realistic. Boom. There's your tape on box. And we'll do another label just for kicks. Get your kicks. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. And just trim this. And... And put our label on our box corner here. Here we go. Got our this side up, our fragile uh, symbol, and our little label, some tape. Logos on the bottom. Sometimes if you if you put the tape on a surface that's not very clean, the tape wants to pop off. Um, you might have to just kind of rub it back and forth a little bit just to get it to adhere. I find like heating it up a little bit makes it want to adhere better. Or you can try other tapes. You know, my tape might just be a little bit too heavy duty. I noticed the thinner, cheaper tape works way better. Uh, same thing with miniature trash bags. The thinner and the cheaper the bag, the better the miniature's gonna look. Same thing with tape. Uh, heavy duty, high quality packaging tape is actually not what you want, which is what this is. Um, ideally, you want thin, cheap packing tape because it's going to adhere better, honestly, on a smaller scale, and the, the thinness of the tape will make it look that much more real. But you get the idea, that looks pretty good. Um, and uh, you know, let me, oh, I thought of another step here that I haven't shown you guys yet. Just adding some weathering to your box. I'm gonna, you've got some dirty paint water here. You see that? And all I'm gonna do is take a wet uh, brush, um, not super duper wet, and just go like this on the corner. Just kind of dab it, trace the edge a little bit. 
Hear that? Let's say maybe this box had cooking oil in it. That's why it had, maybe that's why it has the fragile thing. So it's really good to figure out um, some type of thing that happened to something. And then when you add the weathering to it, it'll start to look much more realistic. So again, I think cook, the cooking grease story is the one I'm gonna stick with for this box. And so this is just sort of a black wash that's not very, uh, it doesn't have a lot of dense black paint in it. It's, it's pretty thin, but it's just so that I can dirty up this box. And then see, as it dries, it gets lighter. So that's where we just put it. That's where we put it at the beginning and it's much lighter. And that's what I want. And then just, if you want it darker, go over it again, but you get the idea, do some dirty edges. Like it was, you know, sitting at the bottom of a, of a um, warehouse floor or something. You know, you get a couple boxes like that. This pizza box was done with uh, super glue to get it to look greasy like that. Super glue dries sort of uh, a dark color. So same thing here. Maybe we'll just dirty up this box. These fragile labels, again, I just went online, found these, shrunk them down and printed them and cut them out and glued them on. Uh, no super fancy thing there. If you wanted to print those on label paper, you could just like I did those actual labels. Then you could just stick them on. But let's see, maybe this box is a little dirtier. We will, we'll do this. Maybe it was drug across the floor and then it fell over and it was drug across this way and somebody tried to flip it over. Got the dirty mitts on it. There we go. It's a really dirty box. All right, a couple of dirty boxes. Dirty boxing. Is that the sound boxing make? I don't know. You tell me in the comments below. All right. Thank you guys for coming by for a, uh, another box making video. And this one I tried to be really more extensive and more educational. Um, a lot of these templates, uh, well, all, pretty much all the templates you see here, uh, you can find on my Etsy store, etsy.com slash shop slash others workshop. You can buy uncut sheets if I have them available. When they run out, I will print more. I always do that. Um, so you can buy some or you can buy the downloadable file and print them yourself. These are printed on just a light brown, medium brown cardstock. Um, and just be careful. Some printers can't take really thick cardstock. So maybe just check your printer and then buy accordingly the thickness of cardstock that won't hurt the printer or won't get stuck in the printer. Um, and then as you saw, we just used some manila envelope paper. You could just grab one you have and cut it up and make some of those. Um, these are printed, I think it's 110 pound white, 90 or 92 or 94 bright white, uh, printed on cardstock, um, 110 pound white, 92 bright. I don't even know how to say it, but you get the picture. Uh, cardstock, uh, cardstock, cardstock, um, and this was made using some corrugated cardboard, cardstock, glue. You get the idea. So I got the McDonald's video showing you how to do that, and we've got um, all of these boxes made now. You can purchase these. You can make them yourself if you want to try to do that. If you're a little bit savvy with a digital graphics program, even a cheap one, you can do it. It's just getting that scale and layout correct so that it prints good from your computer. Um, you saw how to do the tape and that's it. Thank you for stopping by. Um, please consider joining the channel, becoming a member. Thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate your support. Please uh, consider uh, joining the channel as a member. If you like, go check out what those perks are on my main page. There's a subscribe button and a join button right next to it. Um, but otherwise, we appreciate you stopping by. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you would do differently or if you have other ideas. I'm always open to them and I know people read my comments and they like seeing what other people have to talk about. Thank you so much and I hope you like my haircut and uh, I hope you have a great day. Happy boxing.